Missing Markle, the Queen hosted state dinner for members of royal family and world leaders. Prince William and Harry joined the Queen and Prince Charles as they hosted a state dinner for the Commonwealth leaders at Buckingham Palace, though heavily pregnant Kate and Meghan Markle enjoyed an evening off royal duties. Her Majesty was hailed as an icon of the Commonwealth tonight by an African statesman who expressed the organization's regret that she plans to wind down her work with it. In a toast to the monarch at a Buckingham Palace dinner for leaders and foreign ministers from the Commonwealth's 53 nations, Ghana's President Nana and Odankwa Kafoado offered their thanks to her. We were led to, to understand that she'll be winding down her duties as head of the Commonwealth, he said of the Queen. This toast thus takes on an added significance. For it falls upon me to express the depth of our collective regret that she will no longer automatically be present at our proceedings. It is my fervent hope that the deep love she has held for this association will continue to light the way for all of us. He paid tribute to her ability to put visiting politicians at their ease and told 130 guests in the picture gallery, she will always be an icon of the Commonwealth. The dinner, the first time that the Queen has hosted an evening meal in the picture gallery, had the air of a farewell party for the monarch, who will be 92 on Saturday and no longer travels abroad. The Ghanaian president said, We were led to, to understand that she'll be winding down her duties as head of the Commonwealth. This toast thus takes on an added significance, for it falls upon me to express the depth of our collective regret that she will no longer automatically be present at proceedings. The organization will undoubtedly be all the poorer for it. We will miss her inspiring presence, her calm, her steadiness and, above all, her great love and belief in the higher purpose of this commonwealth of nations and its capacity to be a force for good. He praised Her Majesty's legendary ability to put you at ease as well as her lightness, her style and the sheer joy with which she carries out her duties. It is my fervent hope that the deep love she has shown for this association will continue to light the way for all of us, he continued. She will always be an icon of the Commonwealth. In an ivory-white, beaded lace dress decorated with crystal daisies and designed by Angela Kelly, the Queen, wearing the Queen Mark tiara, a ruby and diamond necklace with matching earrings, and the garter star, welcomes her guests to her home. It is with great pleasure that I welcome you all here tonight. As head of the Commonwealth, I am delighted to be able to host this occasion in the United Kingdom for the first time in many years. This dinner is always an opportunity for us to come together, as friends, and I am grateful that so many of you are here with us this time. I know that all of my family join me in wishing you a very enjoyable evening. Thank you. The younger royals were out in force at the dinner. The Duke of Cambridge and Prince Harry were joined by their cousins Princess Beatrice and Eugenie as well as older members of the family. The Queen looked especially delighted to greet Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. And Trudeau seemed to be the man of the hour as he chatted with Prince Harry, after earlier admitting he'd be missing the royal wedding next month, saying, I of course wish them the very best but I have important responsibilities elsewhere. At tonight's black tie dinner, the 130 guests enjoyed a three-course meal washed down with wines from England, New Zealand, Australia, and Cyprus. A steady stream of world leaders began arriving at Buckingham Palace shortly before 7 p.m. Prime Minister Theresa May was one of the first to arrive to the dinner, wearing a dark green and black evening gown with red patent heels, and was accompanied by her husband Philip May. The lavish dinner is ahead of anointing the Queen's successor on Friday, as she told foreign dignitaries earlier today of her sincere wish that they pick Prince Charles to take over as leader of the Commonwealth. One by one luxury cars arrived to the palace, each dropping off a foreign leader in black tie attire. Representatives of each of the 53 member nations arrived in a convoy of Range Rovers, each escorted by a detective. Australian PM Malcolm Turnbull was accompanied by wife Lucy, while New Zealand's visibly pregnant Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern arrived with her partner Clark Gayford. Trudeau smiled and waved to the cameras as he arrived alone for a drinks reception ahead of the dinner. There were plenty of colorful outfits, 
with many guests arriving in traditional dress for the dinner in the palace's picture gallery. India's Narendra Modi was the last to arrive. The Queen and Prince Charles will receive Commonwealth heads of government and their spouses in the blue drawing room, before moving to the picture gallery for the night's meal, followed by a speech from Her Majesty. Normally she would use the ballroom as a banqueting venue but that was used today for the opening of the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. Often the venue for royal drinks receptions, the gallery was created by John Nash as part of his transformation of Buckingham House into a palace for George IV from 1825 and designed as a setting for his art collection. The 47-meter room contains works from many periods almost all acquired by one of four great picture collectors, George IV, his father George III and grandfather Frederick, Prince of Wales, as well as perhaps the great royal picture collector, Charles I. The first wine served, Windsor Great Park Vineyard 2014 English quality sparkling wine, is a commercial operation on the Crown Estate, that is not the royal family's own vineyard. Every guest had their own butter dish. Among the china used was a green Sev's dessert service from the 1790s made of soft paste porcelain for Louis XVI. It was purchased by George IV when he was Prince Regent and the service was used at Carlton House in the 1820s. Prince Harry and his bride-to-be Meghan Markle attended a women's empowerment reception hosted by the Foreign Secretary, Boris Johnson. Prince Harry is expected to join the dinner later on. The morning's spectacle of pomp and pageantry saw guests from around the world welcomed with a guard of honor with flag bearers displaying the flags of the Commonwealth's 53 member states. Before the dinner, Her Majesty, accompanied by Charles hosted a lunch reception for new heads of government, who have never attended Shig before. She chatted with the Prime Minister of the Bahamas Hubert Minnis and Jacinda Ardern, the Prime Minister of New Zealand. The Prince of Wales was seen talking with Prime Minister of Pakistan Shahid Kakanabasi. In a highly unusual move earlier in the day, the Queen, who turns 92 on Saturday, made clear her thoughts on succession, as she said she hoped her son would be able to carry on the important work started by my father in 1949. The position is not her editory, but Prince Charles, who is also the heir to the thrones of 16 Commonwealth nations is expected to get the nod, despite unease among ardent Republicans such as Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn. Downing Street said on Monday that a decision on whether Charles should succeed his mother as Commonwealth head was expected from the heads of state on Friday, and reports have stated the mood is Charles will get their backing. Born out of the former British Empire, the voluntary organization, covering a third of the world's population, typically focuses on development and democracy but is placing greater attention on boosting trade. During the two days of talks, the group is hoping to agree an ocean governance charter, an agenda for trade and investment, and a declaration on tackling cybercrime. Given its highly diverse membership, if agreements can be struck within the Commonwealth, they can likely achieve wider support. At the last Commonwealth Summit in 2015, Leaders struck a deal on climate change that helped pave the way for the Paris Agreement days afterwards. Friday's sessions take place at Windsor Castle, west of London, where the leaders are left entirely alone to discuss whatever they wish. On Thursday morning, the streets around Buckingham Palace were cordoned off, as motorcades carried guests into the Four Accord for the opening of the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. The royals were out in force for the opening ceremony, with the Queen and Charles joined by the Duchess of Cornwall, the Duke of Cambridge, Prince Harry, the Duke of York, the Princess Royal, the Countess of Wessex and the Duke of Kent, Prince and Princess Michael of Kent and Princess Alexandra. Queen Elizabeth, who has been the group's symbolic figurehead since 1952, gave up long-haul travel in support of the biennial summit in 2013 and the 2020 gathering is set to be held in Malaysia. In her opening speech on Thursday morning, Queen Elizabeth spoke of her own extraordinary journey as head of the Commonwealth, which started under her father King George VI with the London Declaration of 1949. She said, when I meet the young leaders of this century I meet my own lifelong commitment made in Africa in 1947 at the age of 21. 
As another birthday approaches this week I'm reminded of the extraordinary journey I've been on and how much good has been achieved. Queen Elizabeth continued, It remains a great pleasure and honor to serve you as head of the Commonwealth and to observe with pride and satisfaction that this is a flourishing network. It is my sincere wish that the Commonwealth will continue to offer stability and continuity for future generations and will decide that one day the Prince of Wales will carry on the important work started by my father in 1949. By continuing to treasure and reinvigorate our associations and activities I believe we will secure a prosperous and more sustainable world for those who follow us. A world where the Commonwealth generosity of spirit can bring its gentle touch of healing and hope to all. The biennial Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting is being held in London for the first time in two decades. But Britain's relationship with the Commonwealth has been clouded by diplomatic missteps and the legacy of empire. May had to apologize this week after it emerged that some people who came to the UK from Caribbean decades ago had been refused medical care in Britain or threatened with deportation because they could not produce paperwork to show the right to residence. The Commonwealth is officially committed to democracy and human rights, but its rights record is mixed. Many look with pride on the organization's role in the 1970s and 80s in trying to end apartheid in South Africa. But many Commonwealth nations have been plagued by corruption or destabilized by coups. Zimbabwe's former president, Robert Mugabe, pulled his country out of the group in 2003 after it was suspended for widespread human rights abuses. Gambia